you are here to learn all about the Titleist GT3 product. Mark? Yeah, we're gonna repeat ourselves a bit because we just did the two, but uh, again, I really like this one. And I played the TSI 3 for a while and uh, you know, TSR, but this one's pretty good too. So yep. I'm definitely gonna give this a shot. So what we've learned, I mean, TSR and TSI 3s were, were like more broadest spectrum in terms of the player that they fit than maybe what people thought originally. Right. Maybe people thought more tour player, other than obviously going to the smaller, smaller version in the four but it definitely was really, really forgiving driver. So it has a lot to stand up to. to right. To be called Generational Technology GT, it's got, a, it's got yeah, real work. And like I said, the ISI when it first came out, that was the best driver we tested that year. So it was tough to beat, right? And TSR is a little better, and this is a little better as well. Yeah, so a little good. You I mean, you touched on it yeah. there. Um, like you said, we'll repeat ourselves a little bit. Thermoform crown, seamless. Right. It just looks like titanium on top. Yeah, but, but it, it's and, not. and it feels like titanium. So yep. that was a big thing they were trying to get is not to have the, to drop off and feel or tinny or whatever. And, and you drop it on the table, it sounds like metal. It's a cool material. It's not been used for golf clubs. Saving the weight, dropping the weight inside the head, and right. in this case, have a look at the bottom of this yeah, one. Yeah, this is interesting. So what they've done actually is they've, they've they used to have the weight in the back here, right? So and, and you could adjust this back and forth. So obviously, a little more draw bias and fade bias. You don't get quite as much draw bias from fade bias being the front here, but what they've done is, A, aerodynamics-wise, right? It's all covered. Tucked in. It's cleaner looking. Nothing gets stuck in there. It's better for aerodynamics, which we're not going to see in the robot, but they do exist. Um, and then, obviously, it's, it's forward. So lower spin, more speed, a lot of other advantages. Right. And, and that forward piece, like, this is the model that we start talking about. Well, the guy that's playing this, the girl that's playing this, they want lower spin. That's why right. they've gone away from the two into, into the three. Yep. So throwing the, the weight from the crown down, forward towards the face, weight track forward towards the face, everything's going towards Yeah, that. it just separated that from the two a little bit. You yeah. know, the two originally were pretty close together in forgiveness and stuff. Matter of fact, in some of tests, the three actually was just as forgiving, if not a touch more than the two. Here you're seeing a little more separation. Yeah. Um, the three is definitely lower spinning by a fair amount than the old model, whereas the two is kind of close, which is good. There's a little more separation than pe some people need spin. Yep. And then the, then the four, obviously, you know, when you get to that is really low spin, and that's for a very specific golfer, which is no longer me. Maybe <laughs> you want to try it. That's okay. But oh, This is me. This, the GT3 yeah. is me. You know, the aerodynamic story, you can see it, and I've got some good footage here for you. When you can look at the back of the driver, it tucks up in the air a little bit, right? Yeah. So that, that creates better aerodynamics, which means for higher speed players, they're going to get more the, out right. of it, the, at the back end of it. Absolutely. Um, and more, more input means right. more output. And, and I gotta tell you, the other thing that's bizarre to me is, you know, the two is obviously you got a deeper, you know, it goes deeper, right? So yep. that makes more forgiving, deeper CG, you know, a lot of advantages, higher launch for, you know, mid handicaps or people don't launch it. But I could swear the three actually looks almost as big as the two. Yeah. Uh, not in a bad way. Though. No, not at all. They, yeah. they both look super clean. Yeah. Um, but they, they don't look a lot different in size. No. So and they're not scary. Even the three is not scary. Not scary. You know, so. And the Titleist has, hasn't lost its classic look. Right? Really simple, right. you know, just that nice smart GT. And even though it's carbon, it's all painted black, so you don't really see the carbon, you know, pugging out or anything weird. And I think that's one of the big things yeah. for Titleist is, is, like, they've always been for, you know, considered players or even players that aren't, you know, great players, but it's, they want to look at this product. And but they that, are that's somewhat changed, though. I mean... T300 was, you know, one of our top selling irons, if not the top selling iron, now T350 is. So they're, yeah. they're definitely getting into a broader market yeah. than originally what you would have thought Tidal was doing. So let's look at the numbers here and see what they produce. Um, 95 miles an hour, zero face, zero path. It hurts an eight degree driver. It hurts uh, any eight degree driver. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. especially a low spinning one. Right, right. So looking at this graph and seeing that, that that eight degree is lower down and you see that lovely stagger from left to right here, they're getting further and further up the fairway. Yeah, 95 miles an hour, zero angle attack and, you know, zero path and everything. 11 degrees is always going to win, right? Yeah. Um, we'll do some higher speed tests when we get the new robot and some other stuff we can do, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, don't look at the distances so much on here. It's, it's more of the spin numbers and how forgiving they are. Yep. Because uh, you're, you're a higher spin, higher, higher loft driver at, at, at 95 miles an hour is always going to win. And we're going to bring up the averages, but basically, on average, the, the ball speed didn't, didn't deteriorate. We saw maybe no. a small improvement. We saw that the heel rating was pretty much better or the same overall. We saw that the toe rating 
was better, better all the same yeah. overall. And we've seen the spin launch, which is all of that technology we just talk about, drop. Right. So we are going to see lower spin with this. From first-hand evidence, I had a bunch of heel shots when I hit this thing. Incredible. Straight down the middle, uh, the spin didn't fluctuate. Was it was just really, really good. I don't so. hit it in the heel very often, but I do hit it on the toe. And I'll be playing around with it a little bit. So we'll go a little longer on with you know exactly what I kind of found. So it's yep. kind of interesting. So they've done an awesome job here. Like the shape of it is, I mean, there's going to be a lot of GT3 drivers on oh, the yeah. market. Now, on the golf course when you're out there. You must get fit for this product. Head to a worldwide golf store or a cool clubs near you and make sure that you get the most expert advice when you're dialing in. You've got so many things to dial you in. You've got a lot three. of adjustments. So, you know, fine tune those things, those little fine tunes at the end. You get those right and that's another five or six yards and that adds up. Yeah. So, worth it. Get the bang for your buck. Go get fit.